Yo, what's going on, fellow? What's going on, my fellow talkers? My MJ, you want to back in the video? And um, so you guys wanted us, you guys gassed me up that last video, that last uh, biggest flexes in anime twelve. You guys gassed me up that video. You, you guys really enjoyed that. So I'm back with another one. Um, we got the boy. You know, we already we all know who Nux is. I reacted like how many videos of it? I yeah, two videos of him so far. It'll be the second video I reacted from him. So um, we'll be technical. I actually reacted to three, but the third, but something happened to the other file. So yeah, I, I technically reacted to three, but well, since like this is gonna be on YouTube, we react to two. So you guys gassed me up last video. Y'all really, y'all wanted some more Nux. Y'all getting some more Nux. You feel me? You guys showed a lot of support. So this is biggest flexes anime thirteen. Uh, I felt uh, the last one was freaking amazing. I'm uh, seeking the thumbnail. We got um Law, Ichigo, Gintama. I forgot his name. He's from Full Metal Optimus, and he's from um. Uh, Fate State Night. He's from this guy from the Fate State Night. I think this is, this is Gilgamesh. I think this is Gilgamesh. I don't know. I know this is Law. He's from Full Metal Alchemist. I forgot his name. Ichigo Gintama. I don't know if that's Gilgamesh or not. Though. I don't know. But anywho, nonetheless, we are going to dive right into this video. I don't want to waste any of your time, any guys' time. Uh, I plan I'll probably upload two videos today. Uh, that's something I think I might upload just two vids today. The I know the Kratos, Kratos versus Thor joint part two came out. I'm probably gonna get on that. Probably after I've done, I'm done recording this, then we got this right here. So, I've only two videos today, guys. Um, yeah, so let's hop in. I stop in. I stop in. I waste too much time. Let's go. Throughout the greatness of this... Throughout the greatness of this flex series, yes, I'm calling it greatness because this be the right to flex on everyone. I've been this getting guy right a here, ton bro. of requests along the road. Hey, Nux, you didn't talk about law flexing. Yeah, law, hey, Nux, man. You didn't Ichigo? talk about Ichigo you can't flexing. About law. Hey, Nux, you didn't talk about Fuhrer King Bradley flexing. Hey, well, fan was... base, welcome yeah, law, to the biggest flexes in anime on, 13. Yeah, I'm supposed to be in there, you feel? The hype yeah, you gotta is absolutely do it, man. real. If you're not you excited, I'll just be double excited. Excited for you. Anime swordsmen have a close place in my heart. I absolutely love me them. Too. Some of them they are massive too. flexors. Me too, me too, me too. And since I don't like to be repeating entries, I've already talked about Mihawk, a lot of Zoro moments, Mr. even though Mihawk. there are more than I plan on mentioning Zoro. eventually. Urza, Sindubadu, Urza from and like, Fairy you know, Tale. Guts from Bazoik. Uh, so this isn't necessarily going to be the eight greatest guts, swordsmen okay. of all time. No, this is going to be the biggest flex is in anime swordman edition. I have picked out some massive swordman flexors. I think you'll enjoy this video because I I love it. Damn it, this one was so much fun to put together. Let me know future anime flex uh, videos that edition? you would like Laga. following a certain thing. And let me know certain flexes you would yeah. like me to cover. On my last video, I told you if you hit 80,000 likes, the next one will be out within a week. And if you look at your watch, it's more than a week because you failed. That's right. I was able to take my time leisurely scratching my Wait, ass for an extra likes, several yeah. days before working. You look at your watch, it's more than a week, because you failed. That's right. Mm. I was able to take my time leisurely, scratching my ass for an extra several days before working on this video, because yes, that is what Lord Noxenor does for fun. So, 80,000 likes and biggest flexes in anime 14 will be out within a week. Smash like, yeah, subscribe come on, to see that. when it comes come on, out, because to come be fair, it'll probably come out man, anyway, just have to rush to uh, commit to certain Run time frames, like because I'm very boy. Awesome. So with that said and I'm done, say anime flex 14, and I think we have to start all? with the king. Sorry, King Fjord Bradley, the homunculus known as Rude from the Fjord anime Fjord from Fjord 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 One of the greatest, one of the anime, greatest of anime of all time, by the way. the majority of the series, this man made believe he was just your humble old swordsman. In fact, it didn't even make yeah, believe it was like yeah, a swordsman. Yeah, but it was, it was all bullcrap. I knew that from the rip. Why the F9? In the first episode of Rude Man's Anime Series, he fights against Isaac McDougal, the ice guy, and completely annihilates him in a second, and then says, wow, I was just lucky that I bumped into him when he was injured. It's thanks to you guys hard work that we got my butt thanks to their hard work Bradley annihilated his face that. You see that, bro, for it because he's freaking a insane bad but Both even came early right on towards him. quite the flexor he was when Dices Ed took his little exam to become a state alchemist he, rapping, he made dude. like a spear and he wanted to flex on Bradley by being like ha you're just gonna let me here in front of the king well right. I could easily so kill you right here and now and run to Bradley bro. punch oh the spear next to his face and Bradley's like wow incredible work and then you didn't even notice that Bradley drew his 
sword, but somehow he managed to draw a sword, cut the spear tip off Ed's spear, resheath his sword. He didn't see any of it because it was too fast, and he just says, keep up the good work, Yo, full metal. Man, Heck really yeah, massive me, flex right off the bat. And I always like counter flexes because Ed tried to flex on the Fuhrer, but uh, then Brandy yeah, back counter flexes back, back, back on Ed, back increases the power it of back personal flex dramatically. That's the rules of flexing. I should make like a whole card game based on flexing. I think that that would be a brilliant idea and definitely a positive source and outlet for me to spend my resources. That's right, Flex Nation, which is, by the way, a sick name for a card game. We will flex on the world all together. Okay, fine, enough of this whole thing. The major flex I wanted to talk about in regards to Fuhrer King Bradley was the absolute hype that surrounded his entrance in the final arc of Fudimeto de Arikimi Shibadezehude. They thought he was dead. They tried to assassinate him. They blew up his train and whatever. Yeah, they thought, yeah, no they thought he kicked the yeah, they, they thought he checked him, but nah, this man pulled up. The moustache. Mur Little did they everybody. know, with moustaches never yeah. go down easily. This man, Bradley, he was a freaking savage, bro. Bradley was like, he was one of the savages. Within the world of Fudimeto de as well as characters like Lord Escanor and his sensei, Lord Twigo, Senpai Samakun. May he shine his glory upon us all. But when Bradley, the guy who, by the way, did not die in that little accident, he actually didn't. enters the battlefield, man, you know, shite man took out a whole real. tank, the took out so many armies of soldiers, bro, battle and murk every single you know handedly, he starts by the way. Right. Yeah, all he doesn't try to sneak up, up on anybody. He doesn't try to take down important good guys all stealthily. Heck nah, he's an old dude with a sword and he starts off with an eye patch, Nux. He has an the eye patch, bro. Makes his presence known, taking down a tank with a sword. If that's with not a, a sword, sword. Like, nothing honestly, else. If I put a freaking sword, keep the body as an eye patch. Took out so many soldiers and killed the weirdest allied forces of all time. A Chinese prince who's inhabited by a good homunculus, a ninja warrior, and this bear of a soldier with like a crocodile for a hand. The mad lad does not stop flexing throughout. Even when they try to suicide bomb him, he slashes the head. Still did, bro. Right, bro. I forgot how much of a savage this guy was. He's been in. I haven't seen the criminal Oscar brother in a grip, dog. I forgot how much of a savage this man Bradley was, bro. Bradley was like, 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 bro.
Fans took all the young boys down. Them them to get the info oh. we need. This Whoa, is a man one of the best characters in one. This is a, again, so far, Nuts is starting this off strong, dog. This is a freaking banger, bro. Well. Holy fact, smokes, he's bringing out the big dogs. I'm so happy you put Law in this. And Bradley, we already starting off good, boy. I can't wait to see I can't wait to see who he's going to And Gintama, too? I'm so glad I got on this. I'm so glad you guys want to react to more on next stuff. Seven pirates that are extremely dangerous that the government gives special protection to Boy, in order for come. them to work with the government. On the one hand, the government Black Beard, doesn't Go, want to deal with these really Boy, dangerous Hancock, that pirates that hate them. On the other hand, the they get special homies. assistance outside. They're humanizing these monsters. Now, they're not going to take any random bozo to become a warlord unless they have prestige, might, and power. Like exactly. Chairman Bucky. And Law decides, Bucky. well, he wants a lot of world government info. He wants to track down a few people. He wants to know where a few things are standing. And therefore, he he wanted to become a warlord. So, in order to make a name for himself, he nonchalantly, alone, walks into a marine base where- oh, I remember this, yeah, I remember this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And says, I want to become a warlord, and I've brought you the beating hearts of 100 pirates. Yo, yes, known pirates. I am flexing on you so hard, you have no choice but to accept me to the ranks of the warlords. And the flex works. The marines got so flexed on, they just welcomed them right into the warlord in order for him to they was freaking. Just a little bit later. The flex they were was huge. Know what to he do. flexed on the warlord system, on the marines, on the pirates he fought, and his flex got him further. Law is an absolute mad lad. He's a man. Yo, he's from a freaking, Katana Gatari, an anime that not enough people have seen, even though it's what absolutely is this, amazing. Okay. No, it has nothing to do with the Katama. 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 What is? Yeah, yes, yeah, Katama. Katama. is like 50 minutes long, and I can't get across how much I like it. It's only like 10 or 12 episodes or something. Right, this anime is anime. Actually I didn't finish. Actually, amazing, I might get spoiled because I haven't finished it. I did not finish this anime, but I know it. I think we're on episode like four or five. I started, but I didn't finish it. That's what I do with that a lot of anime. I start anime, I don't finish it. I don't know why. It could be the shortest of anime. I start them, and I don't finish it because I'm always busy and I'm always moving around and stuff. So I don't have time to finish stuff like I do before. Like when I was like younger, I used to be able to finish like when I was younger, I used to be able to finish like all types of anime, man, hundreds of anime. But now, like, I'm older and I'm working and stuff, I kind of have time to finish, like, the anime that I start, you know, you feel me? But I have seen Katama. In this Katama. world of epic mm -hmm. swordsmen and swords battles, Shichika I heard this is, is really good. And actually, in my opinion, five episodes in, I feel like a lot of people don't give this anime enough credit because, like, it's pretty good. It's very underrated. It, it's because it's, like, it's really short, give it you know? To Togame. Togame needs someone that has no desire for these weapons once they enter their hand. And the reason why Shichika, the strongest swordsman in all the land, doesn't want it is because the swordsman Shichika does not use a sword. His body is his sword. Yo, it almost sounds crazy, like a meme. ain't it? That's how amazing crazy, it is. isn't it? And no, it's not a meme, but it's even more amazing. He's trained in a sword style where he does not need a sword. sword. He is the perfect that's, person that's to some flex the material right there. He doesn't need a sword to take down his enemies. That's... He has no need for it. In fact, he's, he's a samurai at that too, and he doesn't need a sword. How does that sound, you guys? That's pretty wild, ain't it? Over the he fights against the different keepers of the different swords, each one more dangerous, more powerful, and more psychologically interesting. Interesting than the last, not all are bad. Some are genuinely good people that offer their lives to protect these weapons, and you get into a lot of really interesting philosophical episodes. But the point is the following. We don't care about super deep psychological and philosophical episodes. We don't care about the adventure of a lifetime, even though it's an anime that literally no one watches for no reason. We don't care about the fact that Togame is one of the best women in all of anime. We care about <laughs> Shichiga's epic sword flexes and the fact that he doesn't use a sword to flex. There are even these ninja guys that are also searching for the swords and Shichika bumps into a lot of them along the way and uh, annihilates their faces. His first <laughs> attack, more often than not, just shatters that the weapon in, of his enemy because he's like, well, my weapon can't be shattered. My body is literally ready. This man is yeah, body. Yeah, you know, right, exactly. Ready. His body is and literally of course, ready. And anyone exactly. that fights him along yeah, the way is like, uh, yeah, Nani, why really is he coming against me even though I have a sword and like a little army and he's coming barehanded with like this weird tunic thing and with the most like happy and plain joyful expression on his face, he says, I'm here for a good duel. Let's do this. And the guy's like, Bruh, ha, ha, Bruh, And then it's like, <laughs> completely annihilated by Shichika's epic sword yeah. style. That does not involve yeah, sword. Sound yeah, this is a sword nice. flex, and it's a good one. Watch Katanagatari. Next flex. This one is from Konosuba. It's the legend. Konosuba? Okay. Oh, okay. He's been it. Right, I've seen this. 
girl to Fiona Subin. He playing Fiona Subin in here, okay. And she kind of abuses poor Aqua, who's this goddess whammon that ended up stuck on yes, the journey that ends up beat more YouTube. often than not. So when the strongest swordsman in the world, yes, you know, sir, because it's the world, not the world, sees that Aqua has been completely derated by these armies of monsters that they used her as bait to fight, he gets furious. How dare you do this to the wonderful and benevolent goddess? So the strongest warrior in all the land attacks Kazuma and says to Kazuma, Kazuma, I challenge you to a glorious to a yeah, 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 I remember to which this. Kazuma I remember doesn't even give him a second to breathe. He immediately replies, okay, draws a sword. Yeah, he, he, he ran right with him. Yeah, he got right with him, too. Right he definitely did trips. it. Kazuma uses his steel spell thing out of steel swordman guy sword. Which and hit him right on top of his dome. Because he's not a high enough devil and he just like Supposedly makes it appear above his head. Plonks it on the guy's head on the flat out. side. The guy is completely he knocked out. Didn't even get a chance to react. Kazuma, the absolute bad lad, completely overpowering the most powerful fighter in the world. With skill alone. I love that. I love how in Konosuba the fights don't always wind up to a massive dick measuring contest of whoever could pull out a bigger sword. In this case, it's quite the opposite, in fact. And, of course, after Kazuma does this, he keeps the massive sword of Ultimate Night Dude, to which Night Guy has to beg and grovel for him to give it back, purely to flex yeah, yeah. on him, showing his <laughs> I remember that, bro. Yeah, he begged him. Yeah, he, he, he was begging him. He said, please, give me back my sword, bro, please. I yeah, I remember that, John, bro. That John was hilarious. That, yeah, that episode was funny, man. Part. Big fat W goes to the troll. Next leg. And this one is from Jin from World Trigger. And you know World Trigger? Ah, Trigger. okay. World Trigger. So My man's using Trigger. World Trigger. Okay. okay. Then you couldn't necessarily Another great Jin anime, Jin bro. Holy smokes, baby. Everyone who watched World Trigger absolutely loves Jin. Nux, you're killing it, man. You're killing it with these flexes, bro. My man's using World Trigger. A great anime. Great anime, by the way. You guys got to check it out. Basement magic system you want to come up with. There is Treon. Treon is something that flows within everyone. Treon is what they use to make projections of themselves to fight. Treon is a really cool power yeah. system, and I actually have it in my top 10 power systems. Hold on, give me one time. second, guys. That video, very cool, Lord Noxenor. Very cool. Now, certain people that have experienced... Side effect! Which in uh, English is uh, a my side my effect, phone, but it sounds way cooler in Japanese. Woo! The side effect manifests it differently in every single person who has one of these side effectos. And in Jin's <laughs> case, it allows him to see glimpses of the future. Yes, possibly broken, but hey, it definitely doesn't detract from Jin's massive flex. Now, he flexes a lot. There's this massive of war and he doesn't yeah, he was, tell yeah, anyone he was like, what's going to end up the, happening and he acts yeah, so he ever did. That's cocky he, about that's it. Making them try to say, wait a second, if Jin yeah, knew yeah, this is what would happen if I do this, they're not going to end up doing that. And Jin... So I really want to take her out tonight, but I don't get paid until next Friday. It's it, so I'm going to use the earning app to cash out a hundred... Crazy. Jin smugly manipulates everything behind the scenes in order for people to do different things, and it's beautiful. But my favorite Jin flex in World Trigger is when the higher ups in Border, the organization that's keeping out interdimensional enemies, also known as neighbors, decide the weapon in Jin's hands is too strong for him because yeah, honestly, politically, Jin just they, does they, his they, own they, thing and he doesn't they, they, listen they to the higher ups of Border. So we're gonna need to confiscate his weapon. He's done some things that we don't particularly agree with. We're gonna take him out of the picture. So they gather together a massive squad of some extremely powerful dude, some of the really strongest members in Border, in order to go hunt down Jin, politely ask him to give up his black trigger weapon, and if he refuses, to fight him and take it from him. Now here's where the flex comes in. Jin knew this would happen, so he elicited the help of a few friends, so that was a nice surprise for the party attacking him. But even then, at the end of this entire massive fight, he single-handedly takes down some of the really tip-top member guys, luring them into a close enough area for him to release his black trigger's ability and take them down. He's an absolute mad lad, he smiles constantly, Constantly while doing it, Yo, he has he was, a ton of really play. smug lines savvy, throughout. Bro. It's beautiful. He manages to take was all it? of he them down. No the higher ups in border are like, oh my god, this failed. Now Jin is gonna rebel against us, and he's like, wait, too powerful. We can't have this mad lad rebelling against us. No! And while they're having a meeting saying this is actually terrible, Jin walks in and Jin says, Hi, I just wanted to give you guys my black trigger. The mad lad <laughs> was gonna do it anyway. But if he did it without yeah. flexing on them first, they wouldn't have listened to his future demands. Now that he's doing it through the massive flex of taking Taking out all their guys and then just happily giving it to him. That's a huge flex, and it was beautiful. When the flex actually bro, has a purpose so, bro, apart from just flexing, it, it just I'm makes like, it so much really stronger. Damn it, I love Game this. He trigger. gained a political nice. edge on these guys that were against him by taking out their entire squad and then just giving it to them.
them. God damn it, I love World Trigger. Next, Flex from Archer. From Fate's Day Night Unlimited Blade Works. So, a lot of people very often ask my opinion on Fate. Fate is an extremely popular anime franchise, and while I think that Fate Zero is in my five favorite anime about time, Fate's Day Night ain't. It doesn't even make it to like my top hundred. Okay, maybe that was an exaggeration, but it definitely doesn't make it to the top 50. Fate's Day Night Unlimited Blade Works, though, does do one thing great, and that is yeah, Archer. Yeah. Archer is one of my favorite anime characters of all time, and when I hit a million subs, if I hit a million subs, I promised you that I'd make a top 100 anime character list, and damn it, Archer's definitely gonna be on there. Now, in the beginning of Fate's Day Night, Unlimited Blade Works, Archer, Archer flexes on I Shiro a lot. He dumb, very so much Archie. vehemently opposes I and detests I I Shiro's ideals for very well-explained reasons, and because of that, even though his master told him to protect Shiro and not to hurt Shiro and everything, he does it in the most flex accentuated methods possible. Oh, no problem, yeah, Shiro. Yeah, I'll save thing, your life. Thing. Oops, I didn't mean to kick you with the balls that one time. That's I essentially like half so much, the times that Archer I saves him throughout. Now, I really don't want to get into spoilers it. because, in my personal it's opinion, great. Archer is the only reason to watch Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. And he is such a good character and plot point that I would recommend the entire Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works anime on his clout alone. He ends up throwing down yeah, a little bit with Shiro in the middle there and his little cameo, shall we call it, at the end of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Works was a massive like flex on the right King of Kings himself, Kiryu Kameshi, as well as everyone else who believed his ideals were very tarnished. So, in all, I had this whole character analysis planned of Archer, and I never got ahead to doing it because it just never happened somehow. But in a nutshell, it explains his psychology so, so much more if everything he was doing in the Unlimited Blade Works alternate reality when he was fighting Shiro was kind of to push Shiro to a point that Shiro can actually become a man. And he succeeded in doing so. He flexed on Shiro so hard that when he fought against Shiro, I believe very much he was trying to wake the F up out of this pussy bitch protagonist that he used to be. Again, it's very hard to dance around this without spoiling. I do think him making believe he was dead in order to flex on Ginnigamesh at the end there to be extremely satisfying. Ginnigamesh's last word being Archer still makes me giggle inside at the beauty. And also, let's not forget that this guy is a archer, yet pretty much only uses swords. And for the most part, uses no swords. Close that's up. He, Even when he pulls out his bow, it's only to use a sword as an arrow to shoot the sword. The guy is the most epic swordsman of an archer I've ever seen in my entire life. Flexing on the word archer itself. Extremely mm. cool. Archer. Extremely cool. Next, flex. Ichigo Kurosaki Ichigo from Flex. So now, can't believe Mina it's taken this long to talk about um, Ichigo versus Aizen. I think it's one of the biggest flex battles of all time. It's almost a JoJo's battle with levels of flexing going on over here. On the one hand, you have someone like Aizen who so pompously states, oh yes, I've pitted every opponent in your life against you in order for you to become the strongest you can actually be a challenge to me. But you're well, not even a challenge to me! Thanks for the extreme flexing, Aizen, but the spotlight's gonna be on Ichigo right now. Before the fight even starts, Ichigo walks up to Aizen, who is, by the way, like, super awesome. Here are three reasons to start investing. One, you're broke. Two, you want to grow the little money that you currently have. <laughs> Awesome mode and says, Hey, super awesome mode eyes. I don't want to fight with you here. I'll fight with you outside of the city so we don't actually damage it. And Eisen's like, <laughs> Foolish boy! Those are words that can only be spoken by someone who expects to actually put up a fight against me. And in an instant, Ichigo grabs Yo, Eisen's face. face. You know, Boom, I'm gonna really freaking air, face. dog. Oh my him into gosh. The ground, jumps in a he single leap out of all the city, the way breaks to the, the ground. sound barrier a couple of times, which is physically impossible. It's, it's still pretty badass and smashes him into the ground. Aizen proceeds to then like touch his face a little bit to be like, Nani the F just happened over here. And Ichigo he says, okay, let's Does begin. Now as much as I have respect Ooh. for the rest of the actual Ichigo versus Aizen fight, I think that when they cross swords and a mountain pass beside them gets completely annihilated due to the shock waves of strain. One and of Aizen the most says, ah, you think you stand a chance? Right Look what happened to those mountains. Ichigo That's what would happen Aizen. to you. And then a moment later the when Ichigo catches Aizen's sword, he says, Aizen fam, this ain't it. Now he waited until the perfect moment to tell Aizen this fact. He could have told Aizen when Aizen was like, oh yes, I destroyed this mountains. And Ichigo could have immediately said, nuh-uh. And it would have been like one of those, yuh nuh-uh debates, which is one of my favorite political arguments because most politicians seem to get into them. But no, he waited until he caught his sword, completely humiliating him, and then said, oh, that other feat that you thought you had, not bad, it was me too. I have everything. That flex was dope. 
I What's personally think I mean, the flex hey. before the actual fight was even stronger. No one calls this out. Everyone always hypes the actual fight itself and the different flexes in the fight. Nah, fam. The biggest flex in the fight is when, before the fight starts, Ichigo is looking down. He's disrespecting Aizen, this guy who self-proclaimed godified himself. And says, yes. all right, oh. fam, I'll take out the trash. But taking out the trash makes I'm a mess. So I don't want to make a mess oh, in I the city. Might as well make it. a mess in the wilderness. And with the ultimate disrespect, he just grabs Aizen. The unstoppable god grabs his Imagine face, smushes it into the floor, jumps, and then smashes it into the floor again, and then tells him, okay, trash, now we can begin. I think that this is the single biggest Ichigo flex in the series. I think yes, disrespecting that, that this little, guy, Aizen, yeah, so hard was did, beautiful, and I think it's bigger than any individual flex in the actual fight itself. Which is why, in Made It Year, the biggest flex is in Anime 13, Smash Like, and biggest flex is in Anime 14 will be out within a week if it hits 80,000. Oh, subscribe, but we're not done yet. There is one flex that involves a certain swordsman that I've been avoiding. That is correct. My favorite anime swordsman. And no, oh, it's not Guts. I've already talked about oh, Guts. Yeah. This is my favorite anime hey, character of all time. Know. And it's from the man, the myth, the legend himself. Gintoki, Gintoki. from Gintama, Gintama boy. Final flex. Gintama is a parody series that is completely hilarious, but has many, many deep goddamn parts. Gin is yes, still a freaking the, awesome one flex. One of the greatest this man anime of all time. Where samurai Gintama. are forbidden to wield Swords. He goes around carrying a wooden stick. Nobody yes, says. it's not a sword, it's a stick. But he is a swordman, and he will break people's swords with this stick. He will shatter their blades as well as their wills people do and not their butts. Talk about he has broken time, many know, butts bro. with this stick. So this man lad goes up against anime, actual man. swordsmen with this stick alone. This guy, this individual, is wanted by the police, by the government, by space pirates, by terrorists, by, by like, rebellious oh, douches. Literally anime. every major force in the world wants a piece of game whether they want him on their side or they want him dead and Gin flexes on all of them proceeding to go about his everyday daily life in the most nonchalant way possible no matter the massive world powers and tyrants that want him dead or worse you know someone's a true mad lad if they flick a booger at a space tyrant right most people don't have the ball but Gin has the flex he'll get worked up over the stupidest things in the world like uh, if the store is all out of the newest issue of Shonen Jump Gin will freak the F out but oh is that a massive space arm coming to decimate the entire planet? Hi, time to get my stack! Gin is an absolute <laughs> mad lad. I love every fiber of his being, down to his wavy ass hair, which I have to say may or may not be a slight inspiration to the hairstyle of my avatar, which wasn't at all copied from Gin. In fact, I would say Gin Toki probably copied my avatar's hair. Very cool, Gin! Very cool! He's my this favorite guy, character of all man. time, and I can literally talk about him forever. And he flexes so hard that in episode 8 of Gintama, yes, I know the episode because I just restarted the whole thing with a friend of mine. I'm going through it. I am loving every single goddamn episode. It is my favorite anime for a reason. It is literally me incarnate. It's the greatest thing ever. And in episode 8, we start talking about other characters, and we only get to Gin at the halfway point in the episode because, like, you know, Gintama has a cast of really amazing characters, and for some reason he mentions, damn it, they didn't even play the opening in this episode because they were waiting for the main character. That's right, alright. So now that we're at the main character, which is how we should have started, to be honest, play the <laughs> opening now. And then the opening theme starts. He flexes on the oh, fourth yeah. wall. He flexes on the meta. He flexes on everyone. Get yeah. I it's remember that quarter, too. Right? I mean, it's been a minute. I haven't what watched it. I haven't automatically seen saved that quarter. I haven't Every watched the time in so long. So a, a lot of the parts have kind of been like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember this. Because it's been so long since I've seen the time in there. What about the change it's really from it? Gin Toki is the ultimate flexor, flexing on space-time itself. I can literally talk about every single episode of Gintama, pointing out exactly what Definitely I love about it and why Gin is too. a sick flexor. But once I'm talking about episode 8, I will take this one scene into account. No, it is not the time where he convinced an entire crowd that wetting your bed is philosophical mastery that we can only hope to attain. That waking up in warmth instead of needing to wake up, get out of your warm bed and go to the bathroom in order to come back, that's brutal stuff right there. Just hiss in bed. The warmth thing. <laughs> You, you don't need to get up. It is bliss. And he moves the hearts of the people. That is a huge flex. In episode 8, Kondo Isao, leader of the Shinsen Gumi, challenges him to a duel to the death for the sake of a whammy. Now, of course, being that Gin is an absolute hero, he accepts the duel like a hero should. And after making Kondo stand there on the beachfront where they accepted to duel for a few hours, he decides to show up, flexing on him, making him wait for a few hours for absolutely no reason just because he knows that he would. Then when Gin enters the duel, Gin says, I understand that this is a duel to the death, but there is no way... 
I will fight you to the death. I am a hero. I am not someone that will kill. And Kondo's like, damn, I even brought an extra sword for you to use. But if you won't, then I very much respect you. And Kondo drops yeah. his own sword. Yeah, out of respect. He did that. Out of respect, man with too. silver wavy hair. Yeah, out of respect. I remember well. that. And I remember says, that. And you speak decently he dropped for his sword a gorilla, out of too. He which him. obviously insults Kondo, but Kondo will not lose his composure. Gin says, however, now that I see you are truly a man of culture, you're dropping your weapon. You're willing to take me on here. Take my wooden sword. It is my favorite sword. And they're both starting to appreciate one another as two mm -hmm. honorable samurai that only fight exactly. for they justice and other. would never ever do anything backhanded or cruel Happy when he gives night, Kondo me. his wooden sword. Kondo says, wow, this duel, whatever the outcome, it will be beautiful and remembered forever. And then Gin takes out a second wooden sword, which immediately implies that Gin knew this whole thing would occur. He predicted everything perfectly. He yeah. knew that they would have an honorable discussion. He knew that Kondo <laughs> would drop his sword. He knew that he would give Kondo his wooden that? sword and he knew that that would move Kondo. Kondo is now fully enraptured in the duel, and then as his sword swing begins, the top half of his sword snaps off because Gin spent the day that he came late whittling down his sword to be thin <laughs> enough so it would snap before anything. And then, after Gin gave him the sabotaged weapon and he was immediately defeated before he even began, Gin proceeded to annihilate the heck out of his face, just basically beating the crap out of him with a stick. He flexed on him so hard. He flexed on his morals, on his dignity, on making him wait there for an hour. He called him a gorilla and still somehow Kondo trusted him to be a moral and noble swordsman. He flexed on him so hard and with such beauty, Kondo accepted Gin's weapon, which was a completely sabotaged sword and he didn't even expect it for a minute. And Gin proceeded to flex on him even harder by completely annihilating him, humiliating him. And then in the episode right after that, there are posters put up all over the town trying to take down Gin because Gin beat up Kondo, a very reputable dude, which in turn just further muddied up Kondo's reputation because like now there are posters everywhere saying that Kondo was beaten up. Even the wanted posters were a flex on Gin's part. Do you realize that I only selected this flex of his to use because I just saw that episode a few days ago? Do you realize that there are over 350 <laughs> goddamn funny, yo, beautiful yeah, episodes of Gintama that no one freaking that's watches? Be a man. Though. Watch Gintama. But no wonder why Gintoki is my favorite anime character of all time. Not only is he the sarcastic asshole, not only does he have his serious moments, but he's also a huge flexer. Yes, wow. I mean, it's like I know, he's not Saku personified. Gintoki, Sakata, the white devil is the greatest anime character of all time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. Smash like 80k and biggest flexes in anime 13 will be out within a week. Let me know what type of flexes you're interested in. Perhaps wind flexes. I don't know. Literally your call. Subscribe if you're interested in seeing future content. Have yourselves the most wonderful evening. Nuts, Links in the description to my Twitch, Twitter, subreddit, merch, I'll and Patreon. That Check that shit out. Right. Also link to my Rant Cafe podcast where we upload weekly. And most importantly, remember to stay weird, fam. Yes, sir. Yo, shout out to the boy Yo, shout out to the boy Nux, guys. Nux is the freaking go. One of my favorite YouTube anime YouTubers right now. Um, this was good. This was amazing. I love the people who he picked for this uh, this week's anime flex, bro. It was so beautiful. I loved it. I enjoyed it uh, so much. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. You guys, you guys were gassing me up. Y'all wanted to see another one. Here you go. I got another one. There's another one right here. You guys wanted to see some more uh, Nux content. I got you. I got you some Nux, Nux, Nux content. Shout out to the boy Nux. I'll leave the video, all his social media in the description. So you guys can check out his stuff. 80k likes on this video so we can get uh, part 14. So, yes, sir. This is your boy MJ1. I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And, um, yeah. Bye, Zeke.